To be the man, you gotta beat the man. This is my yard now. I will fight anyone and everyone. Here he comes. Where is he? Cut this shot. Your arms are just too short to box with God. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Future Heels Podcast, episode 20. Did I scare you? Yep. <laughs> Yep, wasn't ready for that. I'm not prepared. Well, we should have done this an hour ago, so here yeah. we go. Uh, I'm Brian, Brian Man Peacock, by the I'm way. I'm Jacob Best in the Realm Hunter. Yeah, I almost forgot to introduce us. Uh, and. Oh, there's not a third person. Sorry. <laughs> Brooks isn't well, here. Yeah, bro. He's. Yeah. Instead, we have Princess Leia and Luke Skywalker. <laughs> yeah, and probably m- oh. most, if not all, of the crew of the ghosts. Samoa Joe is also not here. These huh? jokes about the action figures are... <laughs> oh, you mean Roman Reigns? Yeah. What did I say? Samoa Joe? Did I really? That's racist. No, You said all Samoans look the same? No, I'm, I was still correct, though. <laughs> <laughs> he's a Samoa... He's a Joe named Samoa. He was a Samoa named Joe. <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying anymore. You know? He's a Samoan Joe. And then said Samoa Joe is... Right. That's his okay. name. That's a joke I saw on Twitter a lot. Uh, Samoa Joe versus a Samoan Joe. Yeah. It's pretty good. I still like the, the Vince McMahon saying that he wanted his Samoan Ho to win, not Samoa Joe to win. <laughs> uh, but Samoa Joe won anyways. We'll talk about that in a little bit. We're going to start with... Uh, there wasn't a whole lot, so we did get WWE this week. Um, there's some interesting stuff happening in WWE this week, though. And then we're going to talk about Ring of Honor's Best in the World pay-per-view. Right. That we were able to watch most of. Yeah. And hopefully next week we'll be able to talk about the indie show Do's and Don'ts. Because Brooks isn't here this week. So right. So we're going yeah. to wait for him to... That's... Oh, was next week a pay-per-view? I don't know. Is it Great Balls of Fire? Is it next <laughs> week? I don't know. Oh. Oh, next boy. week's 4th of July, so... 4th oh, of it July is. Weekend. Yeah, it is. We'll have, we'll have to see. Only there was a little device that would tell us. Especially down in the right hand corner of our computer. Right hand corner? Bottom right. The clock? Usually there's a calendar down there too. Yeah, but it doesn't tell us Great Balls of Fire is on that Sunday. I don't think that count I don't think Microsoft keeps track of all the WWE pay per views. They should. They should. They don't. I'm sure there's an app you can get for it. Because they're apps now on Windows. Yeah, not programs. Weird. But that's for that other podcast you were talking about. Dylan. Yeah, maybe one day. So we're gonna talk about my favorite promotion, Total Nonstop. At oh, I messed it up. Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem, featuring Global Force Wrestling. Fuck, Fuck that man. owl. So they just lost Drew Galloway. They lost the Hardy Boys. Mike Bennett and Maria Kanellis are now in SmackDown. And now they're losing Al Snow. And they're losing the Hurricane, Shane Helms. And your favorite, our everyone's favorite, Simon Diamond. Not Simon Diamond. <laughs> Who the hell not, is no, Simon not, Diamond? They, they can't release Simon Diamond. They did. So apparently they I didn't know they were even in. I knew Snow and Shane Helms. Well, I didn't yeah. know they were. I knew TNA. Snow. I think Snow's been in TNA for quite some time. I oh, you know, I did see him on a highlight thing recently. Yeah, he's been a producer for a while, I believe. Okay. And Shane, I guess I'm, it doesn't surprise me. I'm surprised. Cause well, yeah, cause he was on one of the Hardys deletion thing majigs. Oh, was weird. It? Yeah. Uh. Um, I tried to catch up on all that, but but yeah, and then Simon Diamond, who I guess is a is a ECW guy, was hey. a TNA guy for a little while. I knew I'd be able to work this into this podcast somehow. What I'm like the Hardys now. I have drones. Yeah, you're obsessed with drones now. You got your parrot. You got your panther. what's that other? The oh. panther. Panther. Yep. That was a parrot. No, the, par- the parrot's the one that works, and the other oh. one is a uh, panther. The lame panther? Yes, yeah, fucking Apparently. <laughs> and then, why are we talking about this? Only because I find it funny. What's the other little one? Oh, it's 
It's a knockoff of what they call a tiny whoop. And you're ordering... It's it's coming from China, so they call it a chiny whoop. Our podcast just got real racist. <laughs> well, sort of. I think it's the funniest name in the world. It is damn funny. I was wondering, I was like, can I get drones in the podcast tonight? But you brought up the Hardys, and the Hardys, I think they use the DCI Phantoms, or DJI Phantoms, or whatever. Yeah, it's the white ones, the big yeah. white ones. Yep. All right, I got that in my system. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem featuring Global Force Wrestling. Fuck, Fuck that, that owl. owl. Just lost three people. I would say Al Snow and Shane Helms, very influential. Oh, yeah. You know, probably great producers. Apparently, they have seven producers right now. So, they dropped three. That's a lot of producers. Yeah. I think SmackDown, like, we, I just found out that... Road Dog is the head of creative over there, mm-hmm. and then they probably have a couple of agents. Right. You know, but that's also two shows we're also talking about, WWE versus TNA. Right. But um, that's that's too many chefs in the kitchen. Yeah, I was about to say that, yeah. There's no way you get anything done. Are you looking up Simon Diamond? Yeah. How did I spell it? Simon. <laughs> Simon. Diamond. Yeah, and then apparently in TNA, his name was... Uh, oh, no, his real name is Pat Kenny. Well, do you know who this is? Um, was he the leader of Team Canada? No, I that know. was another guy, wasn't it? That was Lance Storm, wasn't it? No, I don't think Lance Storm was in Team Canada, surprisingly. Was he not? No. Um, yeah, because uh, it was Bobby Roode, Petey Williams, and... Uh, Christian? No, this is pre-Christian. Yep, it was, and uh, Eric Young. And they had their coach... Who I can't remember his name. Oh, who it was Eric Young, Petey Williams, and Bobby Roode. Okay, yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. Uh, well, see, it looks as generic as you can get. No, that's. And I, you, we've talked about it earlier, and you hate this show, but he looks like the guy from Team Team Canada. Look, kind of looks like the coach from Letterkenny, which would be fitting. Yeah, I, I don't like that show. Come I'm on. working on it. I'll, I'll try okay. to talk about it. <laughs> you gotta let the people hear you. If I get any closer, I'm gonna be sitting on the sectional corner thing. Yeah, that's true. That's not made to be sat on. So, wow. I was using my mouse to try and change things on your computer. <laughs> just because he's so ugly. You know, so, what's that? Ah. Uh, no, I guess it wasn't him. Yep, that's just hockey pictures. Yep. I love hockey. So yeah, TNA just lost a good chunk of very talented, very smart people. Not a surprise. Hopefully they go on to bigger, better things. Right. Um, hopefully Al Snow just gets hired as a trainer in NXT. That'd be awesome. Yeah. He's... Yeah, he was one of the original trainers on Tough Enough, wasn't he? Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Forgot about that. Now he's got a... I... I bring it up, somehow it gets brought up on almost every episode. He's got his own series on Fight TV, uh, like in the ring with bait, like wrestling training videos. I wonder if that's doing really well and he doesn't need TNA anymore. There's not a lot of videos, so I don't think so. Maybe there's going to be more now. That would be cool. <laughs> I'd love to see that. I love watching that stuff. So enough about that shit promotion. Uh, now we're going to talk about WWE. Uh, <laughs> which is better. Supposedly, and I guess people are upset about this. Scott Demore. I remember that guy. That's, yeah, he was the coach. Yeah. Sorry. That's right. Now That's we okay. can move on. Uh, people are upset because apparently at Battleground they plan on having uh, Jinder Mahal defend his championship. I don't know if it's set against who, but uh, in a Punjabi prison match. Have you seen this? No. Look at Punjabi prison match. It's two different cages. It's, I think, a cage around the ring and then a greater cage around that made out of, like, bamboo spikes. Punjabi in and Canada. Canada. What? Oh, that's probably something we shouldn't look up. Uh, that's weird. The Punjabi prison match. There it is, first thing. I love having a TV here for the show. Yeah, there it is. All right, so, yeah, like a cage within a cage and... Made out of bamboo. It's freaking cool. Looks like bamboo to me. Yeah, it's some kind of I'm not a wood expert, thing. 
I just, I love the aesthetic of it. I love that it can be, like, uh, Jinder Mahal's signature thing, the way that the Hell in a Cell was kind of Undertaker's signature thing. Right, since it obviously didn't work out too well for the Great Khali, which I guess was his, looks like they were going to try to make that his signature thing. Punjabi Prison Match Wrestling playset? Oh, there you go. Just get a bunch of chopsticks and glue them together. But doesn't this look cool as hell? Uh... Yeah, I It's like exciting to, to see something different. I do like seeing different things. Looks like someone made their own there. Yep. Appreciate that. I mean, I, I'm looking forward to this. I think Jinder Mahal and Randy Orton maybe could pull off a pretty great match in this. Is that Big Show trying to try I think it is. Prison? Big Show. I just, I don't, I guess I don't get, if you guys could like maybe leave some comments in the review on the YouTube page... On the Facebook page, tweet at me at Best in the Realm. Let me know why. Why is this so hated? Maybe I need to go back and was that guy's head blown off? What the hell was that? It's like yeah, scribbled like, out? No, it's cut off. That's fucking creepy. This you, is why you stay off. The oh, and the Undertaker has a sword. Okay, that's yeah. just some weird little kid Photoshop. Um, anyways. It's terrible Photoshop. I think it looks like fun. It does look like fun. It looks like someone's going to get hurt. But it's different. That's yeah. what we want, right? It I didn't work out well before. I think it was, yeah, it was the Great Khali's thing. Which a Great Khali wasn't that great anyways, just because he had so many problems. And he looked like he was too tall for him to get in the cage right there. <laughs> it's like, damn it, this is my match. I still have to duck. Damn. Oh, okay, yeah, I mean, I'm not against it. I want to see it. We'll have to, I don't know, Undertaker versus Big Show. That was apparently the Punjabi prison match. Why would anyone who's not... Because it was kid. already there, maybe. So they just use it again. Kind of the way they do Hell in a Cell. Okay, yeah. Jack Swagger, that's not real. No. <laughs> Jack Swagger versus CM Punk. Another terrible Photoshop. Another 12-year-old with Photoshop. Uh, so, yeah. Pirated Photoshop, I'm sure. That's that. I don't get it why people hate it. I don't know. I guess we need to go watch it and see. So the next thing is uh, Mauro Ronaldo came back to NXT at the tapings last night. That's pretty exciting. Last night? No. Friday night? I don't remember. I don't know when they tape. Wednesdays. Wednesdays? Because so Wednesday. I had the opportunity to go. Oh, that's right. And I was like, oh, Wednesday. Yeah. I have a regular job now. <laughs> That's going to be very hard on my schedule. So yeah, Wednesdays they tape, which is inconvenient for people with jobs. And Sunday they do pay-per-views, which is inconvenient for people with jobs. Maybe wrestling is not for employed people. Who pays for the tickets then? Rich people. Rich people. <laughs> like the people that are on the front row every freaking week. But uh, yeah, Mario Ronaldo came back. He is going to be NXT's commentator now. He's replacing Tom Phillips, which I mentioned was probably going to be a thing in the article I wrote on futurevillains.com um, because Tom Phillips is now the lead commentator for his show, which I think is SmackDown. Again, I can't keep track of who the hell's on what show and just whatever. Yeah. Um, so that's great. So now we're going to have Percy Watson, Nigel McGuinness, and Mauro Ronaldo. Percy Watson is pretty good. He's alright. He's, well, he's the up-and-comer guy. Yeah. That's what we need in NXT. I like that we have one guy who's pretty good. And hopefully we see him get much better. He's better than freaking David Otunga. Yeah. Which that's another joke you see all the time. Where like, who's David Otunga and Percy Watson? Just doing per Shut up, fucking, just because they're black people doesn't mean you get to... I see too much stupid shit on Twitter. <laughs> I'm glad I'm not on Twitter that much. There's some dumb people on there. Like, there's a bunch of people giving Allison Brie a bunch of shit because she just she's in that show Glow that's on Netflix. Mm -hmm. I'm going to try and watch that this week. It's supposed to be pretty good. But she was talking about in interviews about front bumps and back bumps and how they had to learn how to do that. Oh, it's a, it's neat. You have to, like, tuck your chin so you don't hurt yourself. And she's talking about stuff like that. Right. Which a lot of fans got really upset about. Because she's talking to, like, non-wrestling people about this. But, does it matter? You, you're kind of big on protecting the business, even though yeah. there's nothing to protect anymore. Of course there is. 
Tuck your chin, though. Yeah, that's not a secret. No. That's like that's like if you're talking with, um, like an MMA fighter or something mm-hmm. or a boxer. That's essentially rolling with the punches. And sure. How you absorb the the blows, so you're not taking the brunt of it. To me, that's like if somebody's interested in wrestling, I'm like, oh yeah, so you know, you like tuck your chin, and that's how you protect yourself. Oh no, I didn't know that. Now they're interested. I mean, if she was talking about the one thing I brought up on an episode before, and you didn't know what I was talking about, and I still didn't mention <laughs> it, if that if she was talking about that, I would be I would be pissed. Yeah, I'm sure there would be there would probably be a fucking outrage, but. I, apparently she didn't bring that up. She probably no. I think she just talked about bumping, and yeah, that's if you've watched Tough Enough, you know about that. Oh yeah, that's right. Tough Enough or uh, what's the one on NXT? Breaking Ground. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I they have to talk about that. I'm sure. Yeah, that's not. I mean, there's stuff that shouldn't be talked about, and then there's stuff like that. And then people also got upset because Mark Maron's not a wrestling fan. And he didn't watch Glow. Like, he didn't go back and watch it. Right. Because this version is a fictionalized version of Glow. Yeah. Like, there's bits and pieces they've taken from the real thing. And he didn't want... He didn't want to find a character from the real Glow and attach himself to it too much. He wanted to make his own character. Which sounds like a goofy thing, but it, it's an actor thing, so whatever. Yeah, actors are weird people. But, uh, yeah, Marin's not a wrestling fan. But... Okay. Yeah, exactly. It's like, whatever. That Allison chick, is she a wrestling fan? I mean, She seems like it. She was real excited. One neat thing about Glow, Chavo Guerrero trained them all. Oh, really? The original Glow was trained by his uncle. That's cool. <laughs> that's cool. Yeah, that's a neat little tidbit. Uh, yeah, I'm going to watch Glow this week. Maybe tonight, maybe tomorrow. No, I'm playing Destiny tonight. Uh, I'm still going to try to... I'm going to try to convince the fiancé to watch it. She's almost yeah. finished with her show. Uh, 13 fucking seasons later. Oh my god, I don't know how you survived. In about a month. That's... Jesus Christ. Oh, you know what? I could probably watch Glow at work. Yeah. You can download episodes on Netflix. Download the app. Mm-hmm. Let's download episodes and watch it offline. Yeah, I was just showing uh, the fiancé that. That's super cool. So our child can watch stuff while we're in the car. Oh, yeah, there you go. So, uh, yeah. Oh, and the other stupid thing I saw on Twitter, uh, uh, who the hell was it? We were just talking about it earlier because I knew the finish. Um, somebody tweeted at Frankie Kazarian being a smartass about not putting over the young talent because he yeah. beat Hangman Page in a fucking great match. Yeah. Which we're going to talk about later. But, yeah, people, and he just tweeted back, like, Hey, nice insider language. Yeah. <laughs> Which is like, I know we, I'm sure we've used, said stuff like that on here. We were just talking about bumping and whatnot. Yeah. But I really feel like if you're tweeting that stuff at a wrestler, they're going to make fun of you. Oh, yeah. Odds are they've gone back in the locker room and they're like, look at this guy. <laughs> <laughs> look at this fucking tool. Uh, yeah, because I'm sure we've talked about workers and jobbers and... Yeah. Which is pretty much, I guess, surface level smart mark stuff. Yeah, but, but like, I've sort of been in the business, so I feel like I can use yeah. it sometimes. And I'm super, super interested in getting in the business, obviously, since we've been doing commentary and whatnot. Yeah, so, I mean, I don't try to rub it in your face. Like, every chance I get, I use some... Way to put the young talent on. Fuck you! Yeah. That match was good. Yeah. If you wanted to bury, and that's another term, young talent, he would just not have a good match with them. You wouldn't have taken that fucking... The nails in the strap? Oh yeah. my god. <sighs> or whatever the hell that was in the strap. That was a good match. That was good. I don't know where... They both come out on top. Yeah. What are we talking about? Who won? No. We talked about the match. Yeah. And then we mentioned, oh hey, Fanky Kazarian won. Yeah, but it doesn't but matter. Cause... No. And now they're probably going to murder each other in another match. <laughs> yeah. All right. So anyways, uh, next thing is Bailey and Corey Graves might be in a romantic relationship angle. Uh, yeah, I, I saw something about this. I think it's dumb. I hope they don't do it. 
Please don't do that. I don't mind. It's going to be a thing angles. where she's never kissed a boy before. Oh. And she's got a thing for Corey Graves. This is what I've read on the stupid internet. Yeah. The dirt sheets. I didn't even know if it was that. It was, I don't know if it was. It could have just been someone. Ma- I don't think it was someone making Was it this the, uh, the same source as Alistair Black is going to be in Ocala? No. <laughs> no. Probably. But you know what? Cash is owner was in Ocala, wasn't he? No. Or was he? Well, he was in Crystal River then. Was he? Oh, yeah, I've seen him twice in NXT. I know that. I haven't seen him yet. Really? You have, yeah. Okay, but he just had a match with Alistair Black, so it's a good chance we'll see Alistair <laughs> yeah, Black. Yeah, he did. Um, so, Bailey and Corey Graves being in a relationship. Bailey's such a clean cut cutesy hey just and maybe because she's a nerd girl she likes the the hard scary tattooed guy but so this is what i'll say about it i'm not happy about it but at least they've got two fucking fantastic personalities on it so maybe they can make it work maybe maybe i'm still probably not gonna like it i don't see any way it could go where i would be happy with any outcome I don't know what the point of it is I don't yeah I don't either Bailey needs something Corey Graves doesn't he's a commentator yeah and everyone loves him if he's gonna be a commentator let him commentate like he had a weird role in this yes Enzo he did cast thing yes he did which we can go ahead and talk about yeah cause the Bailey things uh, we don't like it yes I I'm not gonna hold my breath on it so, yeah, and so it was like a week or two ago, maybe it was longer than that, Corey Graves had like some bad information for Angle, we didn't know what it was, it was like a tip he got, which is the thing that he's brought up on Bring It to the Table, that he has sources, he's an inside guy, I love that, they're doing that with him, like that would be really kind of neat to have that as a character, as a commentator, Right. Because, you know, back in the day, they used to say, like, oh, I was talking to so-and-so backstage. I think that was Jerry Lawler's thing. Because he used to be a wrestler, the wrestlers uh, would talk to him. Okay. I mean, that was kind of what it was back in the day. And I was kind of, I was just thinking about Jerry Lawler with this as well. Yeah? When I was thinking about being more than just an announcer. Yeah, who Lawler like, well, was. Okay, yeah, I could see. I, I was actually just thinking of that. So, yeah, that's uh, a little it's interesting. It's cool. I like it. Yeah. But uh, it turned out that the information that Corey had was that Cass had been the one attacking Enzo all this time. And, I mean, before it was blamed on the revival, which would have been the better thing here, I think. Yeah. Or the big show, which is weird. Yeah. he's not sneak attacking anybody. Yeah. (laughs) I think the big show would tell you that. Yeah. Yeah, Enzo, he did tell Enzo that backstage. He was like, there's no way I can sneak attack anybody. <laughs> uh, I guess he could reach over a box. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, it turns out Cass is the one that attacked him. And now, which, God, if you get attacked like two or three times, and you know now it's kind of implied that Cass is the one that attacked him in NXT back in the day. Like, boy, you get attacked that many times. And your buddy's around, your seven foot tall buddy. Yeah. Maybe get a new seven foot tall buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. He sucks. He's obviously not protecting you. No. But uh, yeah, Cass is upset because Enzo runs his mouth and gets them in trouble. And he just booted him in the face and now they're split up. And now Enzo will be on 205 Live. He should be. With different music because Cass is too big to take the music. <laughs> Uh, no, Enzo has to keep the music. I know. It Enzo's was, in the music. It was a meme I saw. <laughs> oh. Where it was, uh, when your friend betrays you and uh, you're too small to fight him over the music rights or something. <laughs> nice. So, yeah, that's another thing we could talk about, 205 Live, we just watched that. Or uh, when you realize you have to start spelling soft the correct way. <laughs> Yeah, I wonder who's going to keep that. I would imagine Enzo is. Yeah. It seemed like Cass hated all that. With the... Well, after he turned on him. Yeah. But yeah, 205 Live is a good thing to talk about. Uh, we watched uh, the Mustafa Ali versus Drew Gulak. Yep. 
a no fly zone. Yep. I fucking love that. I do too. It's interesting. 205 Live is really good, and I feel like they would be doing so much better if people like Enzo Amore, uh, Kalisto, and you said Aleister Black is 205? Yeah, Aleister Black's built at 205, but Enzo... It's 206. Enzo is 206. <laughs> I think You're Enzo could lose a real heavyweight. That's right. Enzo could lose a pound. <laughs> but if you, you bring... imagine him showing up and be like... Man, why am I even here? I'm 206. I can't I don't even... He should. That should be his gimmick. And then he's got weights in his jacket or something when they do a weigh-in. Because <laughs> he just doesn't want to be there? Yeah, because he's trying to get out of it. <laughs> yeah, sure. But um, if you bring these three big names... Because right now they do have Neville. They have TJP. They have Austin Aries. Um, Gentleman Jack Gallagher's getting over big. Um, oh, yeah. But they need more people. Mustafa Ali and Rich Swan. I love Rich Swan and all these other guys. No, I they know. are incredible and it's the same workers. People every week, right? That Almost too. Almost the same matches too. This is the third Ali Gulak match we've really? had in a row. I think. Oh yeah, because they kind of showed a video package of that. Yeah. So Which, yeah, yeah, and I don't mind like best of three matches if they're doing it on purpose, but. It's mm-hmm. like, it's like they don't have enough people on 205. And I think they have plenty of people. Not really. I just don't think they're using them. They don't have that many people. They have like I think I can name them all. Tozawa, Kendrick, Cedric Alexander, Mustafa Ali, Jack Gallagher, Austin Aries. But anyone from the Cruiserweight Classic, they could pull back. I mean, if they're under contract. If they can get a hold of them. Is it? Would it be... If... WWE headquarters comes up on your cell phone. Aren't you going to answer it? Or even hell, even a call from Tony North, Rhodes wouldn't. Even a call from North Carolina. He's not. He's over two hundred five. If a call from North Carolina showed up on your phone, aren't you going to answer it? What's in North Carolina? Isn't that where their headquarters are? Is that Connecticut? Stanford, Connecticut. Is it? Yeah. I thought it was North Carolina. <laughs> it's like, is Andy calling them? Yeah. <laughs> Are you sure it's Connecticut? I'm I mean, like 99% that, sure. That would make sense, but let me, I gotta check. Okay. I'm just checking real quick. Uh, shit, TNA was in Tennessee or Georgia or something? I don't know. Oh, you're right. Yeah. Stanford, Connecticut. <laughs> What's North Carolina then? I don't know. Something's in North Carolina. Rocky Mountain Wrestling? I have no idea. But, uh,. But, um, what were we talking about 205 Live? Do Alistair Black, if they would put him over and then put him on 205 Live? Yeah, if they gave him, like, a really good, solid NXT run. Alistair which, Black versus Neville? Yeah, like, that would be... God, that that's exciting. Would ridiculous. I would love to see that match. Uh, Alistair sure Black will. versus TJP? Yeah. I, I want to see Alistair Black versus the world, so... Yeah, I mean, yeah, absolutely. I would love to see, like, Kalisto versus TJP. Yeah. I think Kalisto's been on 205 before. Oh, I don't know. Now he might win 206. <laughs> hey, Enzo Mori versus any of those guys. He's not as good as them. Which is why he would benefit from being on a show like that. Right. Because somebody like a TJP... Or Drew Gulak could eat Tony East, that's another guy. Yeah. Uh, could easily carry him through a match, make him look good. Well, okay, besides who's on 205 and all that, wasn't the cruiserweight weight, didn't it used to be 220? I have no idea. Or 225 and under? I'm not sure. I think it used to be for cruiserweight. They must have like called all the smaller guys, like, how much do you weigh? Yes. <laughs> Uh, uh, Triple H? Is this is this is you? <laughs> yeah, how was you weigh? Like two oh three? Why? All right, cool. Bye. Bye. <laughs> what a weird phone call to get. <laughs> Thanks, brother. I I don't know if Triple H has brother. I can I can Probably. see him saying brother. We're just Cedric Alexander hanging out. <laughs> Cedric Alexander gets the phone call from Triple H. How much do you weigh? <laughs> that would be the most confusing day of their lives. All right, cool. Thanks, brother. <laughs> Ten minutes later, get a phone call. 
hey, you guys available to do a tournament? Yeah. Rick Swan's in here. You want me to ask him to? And then the one guy that was like 208 just waiting for his phone to ring. Yeah. That rings. I bet you know what else, who else is uh, 205 is uh, the Kentucky Gentleman. Oh, Chucky e. T. Hell yeah. I just want Chucky e. T and WWE so bad. I He's love probably him to death. like 195. He probably is. I'm, gonna, I'm checking. And that's like driven wet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's just so many guys they could pull from even the main roster. There's got to be more people. Uh, see, who's on NXT they could pull? Oh, it, Bill Wade is 210. There you go. He needs to lose five pounds. Do a training montage of him losing five pounds. And then, like, eating a bunch of fried food because he's from Kentucky. <laughs> he's dumb. Yeah, eating a bunch of KFC. <laughs> there's the thing. There's the tie-in. Yeah. We found it. Enzo's out on his KFC ads, too, though. Fuck. He's running out <laughs> of things to do. Oh, my God. If Enzo was doing a KFC ad and he doesn't have a second person and Chucky e. T walks in, I will freak the fuck out. Oh, is a Kentucky gentleman here to eat some KFC. What's the next topic? <laughs> what were you even going to say? That just trailed off big Dodge. time. Yep. The next thing is... Miz recruited Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel to be his entourage. So, the Miz came out and was apologizing to Maurice because he broke a clock. He He's embarrassing her lately. And then Dean Ambrose came out, did basically nothing, and Miz spilled some champagne or whatever on the Marie, on Marie, the Maurice. Um, Miz knocked the clock over, broke it again, and the Bears attacked... Uh, the Miz. It turns out both Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. These guys are really damn good. Bo Dallas was a long reigning NXT champion. Mm-hmm. Curtis Axel's dad is Mr. Perfect. Mm-hmm. And he's still in the Royal Rumble? Is yes. That, that that's right. Correct. He hasn't been but if their, ta- if their team name is The Entourage and they come out with like Miz's music or something similar to Miz's music. Right. We came to play. Like, that's awesome. All right, so on a scale from one to ten, uh huh. How much are, do you enjoy this Miz situation? Now, right now, eight. Okay. Because I I don't care about Dean Ambrose anymore. I wish it was someone else. Who would you uh, Who would you rather be then? Uh, from the roster? Fucking anybody? Okay. Ambrose is just... He's so checked out. Because to be honest with you, I'm at about a two right now. Really? I don't... Yeah. I don't... I don't like The Miz. Don't Do you not like The Miz powers. because he's a heel or because you don't like him at all? Because I... I thought it was because he was a heel and I was okay. like, oh great, he's doing a great job. He is. I just don't... He's good at it. I just don't like him. I don't like the... <laughs> I don't like the clock. The clock is a real... I don't... Character. I don't... Yeah. Kind of like bacon. don't give a shit about Maurice. She's gorgeous. I, doesn't do it for me. <laughs> uh, cool Bo Dallas and Curtis Axel. I mean, great. Yeah. They've got a, they still have a job. Yeah, Good thank God. Bro, Curtis Axel was just complaining about booking in WWE, too. Like... I'm glad to see that they're not gone. Right. But they're dressed as bears. They, that, yeah. I don't like segments. I hope this is done now. And we can just have, like, the Entourage versus Ambrose. Or the Miz versus Ambrose with the Entourage. That kind of thing. I mean, um, yeah, it's going to lead to something. Maybe. <laughs> hopefully. I just... I don't care. I, I like that. I'm glad they all have jobs except for the Miz. I don't. I could care less. If the Miz got fired tomorrow. <laughs> like, <laughs> no, nah, the Miz has got a job for life. I think. Probably. I mean, he's been there for a, he's a very lifer. long time. Yeah, he's always going to be doing something. He's going to be a writer or something. I'm sure. Yeah. But yeah, I just don't. I, I think it's boring. It's not. Doesn't capture my attention. Like that's my go. Get a drink match. We know segment. we know Brooks hates the Miz. Yeah. Love you, Brooks, but you're wrong. 
You're wrong too. Uh, the Miz is a fan. The Miz is the best heel of this generation. No one's better. How dare you say that and own a Kevin Owens shirt? <laughs> oh man, um, Kevin just has too many people that like him. He's the most likable heel. He is. He is your new face of America. Yeah. He's a. Uh, who were we talking about earlier? Being a dick. I said he was, oh, Conor McGregor. Oh, yeah. But he's an endearing dick. <laughs> <laughs> kind of like uh, Cody Rhodes, I said. <laughs> yeah. I do like that Cody Rhodes flipped off an audience member. That was, that's for later. Um, like, he, he too sweet and then flipped him off. Yeah, I know you said that. <laughs> Fucker. Uh, and one thing that I'll tell you I wasn't excited about, or used to not be excited about anymore, but now I'm super happy he's back. It's Braun fucking Strowman. That was a kind of awkward segment, but pretty cool. When uh, he had a, when the Samoan Joe was fighting Samoa Joe, right. and then you hear the ambulance beeping. And the only thing I wish, okay, that was cool. But I, back in the day, and I, I, I mean, I can see why they can't do it now. Mm-hmm. But that would have backed up onto the ramp. Yes, I agree. I knew that's where you were going with that, too. Yeah. Like, if that happened, that would have been so much cooler. You think Braun and Roman came up with that, and then they brought it to Vince, and they're like, yeah, let's do it. Yeah, and it'll be on the ramp. Oh, hold on, guys. <laughs> yeah, not anymore. That it's a TV screen. now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> well, we'll just park it to the side. No, we got to have those receipts. Yeah. <laughs> you, have you noticed that they moved the commentators for Raw so they can fit more seats? Uh, yeah, that's probably why they did it. Yeah. I would imagine. I mean, they're up they, on the stage now, right? Yeah, they're up yeah. by the stage, which I don't... I don't know. When I set up yeah. my wrestling figures, there's I like the commentators by the down by the ring. Right. Yeah. Like it just seems natural. It does. It's probably smarter to put them on the stage, though. For, I mean, many reasons. Audio reasons and everything. Yeah, I'm sure. And with the monitors, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But it just doesn't... feels like something's missing. So that was Raw. Decent show. Uh, I think that was pretty much all that happened. Anything... Everything that was interesting. Yeah. Uh, before we skip the Strowman thing, I just want to bring up the... The kayfabe news article I saw. About yeah. Strowman was seen yelling, I'm not finished with you at a half-eaten Sunday. <laughs> Which I still think that I'm not finished with you is like, was not intended to be his, uh, his catchphrase. Right. I love it though. When it he was, yells, I'm not finished with you, it's kind of terrifying. A little bit, yeah. Um, yeah, if it's not on a shirt, I'm sure it will be soon. Yeah, it probably is. Yeah, he's uh, back now and he's gonna be murdering Samoa Joe probably. Can we just take about 13 seconds to talk about how shitty. So many shirts are. <laughs> said Samoa Joe. What? I said he's going to be murdering Samoa Joe. You did it again. <laughs> and well, I mean, I'm still technically right. Samoan Joe. But yeah, I was going through some of the shirts. That they were having a sale this weekend. Black Friday and whatever month we're in. And uh, so many shirts. I'm just like, who the fuck is wearing these? Apparently nobody because they're on clearance. I buy them when they go on clearance. I was going to, but some other, so many of them were just so bad. Huh. And the new um, Roman Reigns shirt. Oh, when I saw it, I, I had this feeling too, and I saw someone else post it. Everyone, I guess everyone was like, "Why is Roman wearing an AJ Styles shirt?" His shirt, his new shirt, looks like a fucking AJ Styles shirt. Huh. It's him doing the Superman, like a silhouette of him doing a Superman punch, but like a white blue, white blue, white blue. Like oh wow! That one. Like, fr- like at an angle. Okay. It really looks like AJ Styles is doing the jumping elbow huh. thing he does. That's weird. You could probably mess with AJ Styles and Photoshop the silhouette and make it look like a Superman punch. It's, it, it's probably what they did. Yeah, and it didn't take <laughs> much. Huh. It took writing Roman Reigns on the back of the shirt. That's it. Yeah. I can imagine somebody going through the merchandise, looking at the fronts, being like, Roman, 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 
AJ. Nope, it's Roman. And <laughs> look at the back. <laughs> yeah, I, I I was like, oh, cool AJ Styles shirt. You know, it's Roman Reigns. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a Roman Reigns shirt. I like him all right. We've talked that to death though. So that's Raw. Uh, I'm excited for Strowman being back and all that good stuff. To SmackDown now. Oh wow, that does look like an AJ shirt. It's <laughs> yeah. my yard. Yeah, oh, that's what's on the back. Yeah, Roman Reigns. It's my yard. And the hair. It's a, the hair's a little long on the silhouette. Yeah. I think they they just photoshopped that in from AJ though. I think, yeah, they just mirrored it. <laughs> now it looks like a Superman punch. <laughs> yep. I mean, yeah, SmackDown. So, as you know from episode nineteen, Money in the BS. We're not too happy with the women's uh, Money in the Bank ladder match. Because it ended with James Ellsworth dropping the briefcase to Carmella. You know, I wouldn't have minded that if it wasn't the first one. No, I just don't mind it, period. No, I, I, I do mind it, rather, period. Not to get, you know, feminist or anything, but the first women's match, women's Money in the Bank match to be won by a guy. Te- not technically, but, you know, practically won by a guy. Yeah. Is kind of shitting on the women's division. Yeah, and, uh, you know, I can't remember if I said this last week or not, but Zack Ryder brought up something interesting at a pay-per-view, was that, you know, he won the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania, lost it the next night. No one's going to remember that he lost it the exactly, next night. Yeah. They're going to remember WrestleMania. Yeah. The pay-per-view. Money in the Bank is a big pay-per-view. Yeah, for the most part, we only watched pay-per-views for the longest time. Yeah, and we we check out the clips. I try to watch the shows. I didn't watch many of, many of it this much of They're it this week. They're fairly entertaining, but that's and not that's, enough. That's and a three lot. hours of Raw. Yeah. No. Luckily on Hulu, it's half that. But yeah. But that's a lot of hours in a week, and I got so, a full time job. Yeah, absolutely. Like I don't have that. There's much a lot time of in TV to watch. There's a lot of movies to watch. And I like I like playing games. I work, and it's just like three hours. Come on, guys. Then you got two hours for SmackDown, hour for NXT, hour for two hundred five. And if you watch any other company, yeah, that other one. What's it called again? Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem featuring Global Force Wrestling. Fuck, Fuck that owl. And then when you want to watch the really good stuff, you want to catch up on Ring of Honor. Yeah. Or PWG. And you got, I mean, fucking... What culture? What culture? You got your New Japan. And the last New Japan show I tried to watch was five hours. Five hours. Is that because New Japan doesn't put out shows very often? So they just have a really long show? Do they have a weekly show? I don't think so. I have no idea. See, they must have a weekly show. Because uh, in a Alistair Black, Tommy End interview I listened to, I think it was with Cole Cabana, he was saying that they didn't have WWE, they only had New Japan. Oh, okay. So uh, there must be some weekly show. Look it up. So, uh... It's probably going to be in Japanese, That's and that's why I'm not... That's why we're not super caught up on New Japan. Yeah. Because like, I... I mean, I've even gone to uh, WWE shows, and it's like, this... I went back and I watched WrestleMania 24 with commentary. Does New Japan have a weekly show? It's like one of the first things to come up. And the results are... Reading it. Okay. But yeah, I went back and I watched WrestleMania 24 just because I... You know, being in the crowd, you miss a lot of camera angles, and you miss the commentary. Mm Mm-hmm. Uh, no, I guess they do not have a show, weekly show. Okay. So they just have their tournaments and their pay-per-views, and that's interesting. I guess there is a... something called World Pro Wrestling Return, which airs on the Fight Network. Okay. It's about nine or ten months behind, and it's just matches. Nine or ten months behind? I think it's like the, I think worse than the Ring of Honor. It's Holy just pi- cherry picked matches. Okay, so it's a clip show basically. Uh, they run lots of untelevised house shows. Um, yeah, but it's mainly their. That just seems pointless. What house? Sh- the untelevised house shows? No, the nine to ten months behind. 
I think it's just to get something on TV. That's like uh, SmackDown on the network is updated every six months or something. I think that's a contract thing, though. Yeah, with TV? Yeah. Because, like, it goes up the next day on Hulu. Which is yeah. how I watch it. Right. And no commercials, because we get the commercial-free Hulu. Yeah, you crazy paying all that extra shit. It was, how much extra is it? Seven, eight, nine, ten, one. Three dollars extra a month not to get... I say that, and I'm probably going to pay for YouTube Red when my thing's out. Yeah. Because it is nice. I guess I shouldn't give you shit for that anymore. <laughs> so, they're going to have a second Women's Money in the Bank match on SmackDown. And that's why I say no one remembers what happens on the show. They only remember the pay-per-view. Exactly. Because now we're going to have the show. And, I mean, I guess, I guess people are going to remember when whoever cashes it in does. But... Boy, yeah. Carmella should have cashed it in. Yeah. On Sunday. Yeah, when she came out. Yeah, which which was a cool part of the show. Because then they couldn't have taken it away. Yeah, that would have made it more interesting. Yeah. She cashed it in and won. And then it's like, well, we're kind of going to take it from you, so we have to take the belt. Oh, yeah. Do we give it back? Or do we... Like, vacant do do? wins again. Yeah, fucking vacant. <laughs> Hate that guy. And yet, yeah, this is a crazy situation... Um, I hope, I hope Carmella wins it, legit. I think she's I got know, a good character. Okay. <laughs> I think, like I said before, I think she's the most interesting. <laughs> the most interesting is I yawn. I get, but God damn it, Becky Lynch, God, I want her to win. Or, I have a feeling she's going to. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. That's already my prediction for that. Okay. I mean, we don't do predictions for SmackDown, but... No. I mean, we could... We yeah, are we, for we, this one. Yeah, for this one, yeah. I was going to say, we don't need to. We I, don't need to do that. I'm saying Carmella wins it again. Legit. I, w- I would not be surprised, but I also wouldn't be surprised if Becky wins. Yeah. And I, I didn't want Becky to win. But it just makes sense. And Tamina, we know, is not going to win after what the fuck she just did. <laughs> I was did. just going to bring that up. So, you found it on Hulu, but it's not on YouTube. No, they, they you cut Hulu, that out. Go watch uh, the, the segment with Daniel Bryan and the women in the match. And Tamina, or Charlotte says to who? Who does she say it to? Natalia. Natalia, shut up or I'm going to make you look like Ellsworth. Right. Tamina says, Charlotte, shut up. Or you're going to start looking like Ellsworth. <laughs> she, and then everyone just goes quiet. Yeah, Dan, Daniel Bryan's like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> it continues on. How, by the way, it just how the fuck, because we know how Daniel Bryan is, especially Brian, Brian Danielson. Yeah. How the fuck did he not laugh? Yeah. It looks Kudos like he's going to laugh any time. Like, he looks like he's just on the verge of laughter. I've seen him do serious stuff and laugh. Right. So, uh, maybe I think he, he felt, was just confused. Like, and he also may have felt bad for her. Yeah. Or it he might was just like, did she just say that? <laughs> All right, now we got to keep going. Uh, good Lord. That was funny. I'm glad I went back and found <laughs> it. I think even my reaction was a little delayed because I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But Tamina's a good wrestler. She's just... Tamina the Parrot. <laughs> Tamina the Parrot. That's right. We were just we were saying that she would just repeat things that people say to her and then repeat if somebody did a suplex to her, she would do a suplex to them. Yeah, she just does the <laughs> same move right back to him. Oh my God, that'd be funny as shit. That'd be, that would be her punishment. Then we get Tamina the Parrot versus Charlotte the Peacock. Yes. That would be awesome. And Dalton Castle interferes, and he's like, there can only be one peacock. <laughs> you think they it's would let Dalton balls. Castle uh, like hit his finisher on Charlotte? I don't think so. I don't think they would allow a man to hit a woman. Boy, can you imagine the heat. Oh, yeah. I guess they, w- they don't do that, do they? No, I don't think so. And oh, they, in, in a way, they shouldn't. In, in a big way, they shouldn't. I mean, yeah, I, I, I get it. Like, but I'm not... The heat, though. That heat, though. Yeah, I'm not... I mean, intergender tag matches, I'm not a fan of. No. But... 
I mean, either way that they do them. I'm not saying they shouldn't be done. Yeah. I'm not saying, uh, you know, they're bad in any way. But I just, both ways. We're not saying Andy Kaufman's a bad person. Andy Kaufman's amazing. You know about Andy Kaufman, right? No. Oh, for fuck's sake. That's going to be an education thing. Uh, <laughs> we're going to move on now. We're, and then I'm, we're going to talk about Andy Kaufman after the podcast because there's okay. stuff you've got to watch. Andy Kaufman's incredible. And he was a big part of wrestling history with Jerry Lawler and all that way back in the day. Anyways. The name sounds super familiar. And once you tell me, I'll probably remember. Yeah. But, but uh, we watched Ring of Honor most of Ring of Honor Best in the World. Um, we didn't get to watch a six-man tag match, but that show was pretty fucking great. I've never yeah. seen War Machine before. Yeah, they're awesome. Um, do you have the card? I did. You did? I will have to find it. We missed the first match. How? Um, I don't know, because I can't reveal our sources. We also missed Silas Young versus Jay Lethal. Did we? Yeah, we watched, like, the promo. Oh, shit. Yes, we did. Which um, I'm pretty interested in Silas Young. I haven't really seen a lot of him, but he definitely reminds me of a Jake the Snake type person. Yeah, and that's kind of his gimmick. Like, last real man. Um, He's very, very much a throwback. Yeah. And it's cool. Yeah. And, like, I'm sure he's a good wrestler if he's in Ring of Honor. Oh, no. I think we just... What? Chris Wolf. Oh, this is the. Uh, I don't know if this is in order. I don't. Either that or we somehow saw it out of order. That wouldn't make sense either. Cause we, it was obviously legit. I don't know. Um, it was the women's match that it says is first. Huh. The one that we blink and missed. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, so we can't really be I think it was about first. That. Was it first? Yeah. And we were talking to, to the guests you had over, and then we looked, and the match was already over. Oh, it was right, very yeah. short. Yeah. Uh, Chris Wolf and Sumizaki. I mean, I watched. The other one. Some of it. I watched the very beginning. I missed the finish. Seemed like a fine match was starting. So, I don't know what was up with that. They're, I don't know. I guess they figure since WWE's dropped that terrible gimmick of short women's matches, they're going to pick it up. Yeah, I guess. Um, and we saw Team CMLL, which is Ultimo Guerrero and El Terrible, defeat the Kingdom of Matt Taven and Vinny, which I've never pronounced the oh, last Oh, okay. Uh, so, that would have been the guy in the Jason mask. Yeah. The guy with, like, the dreads. and Right. I like him. He's, he's pretty good. Matt badass. Taven's incredible. And then, uh, what's the other guy's name? I can't remember. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not super familiar with them. Oh, I had it and I forgot it. The guy who broke his leg. Yeah. He actually got involved. I was like, oh, dude, you got a broken leg. Yeah. <laughs> Sit the fuck back down. And who do they face? Uh, oh, that right, CMLL. Yeah. Which, that was a cool match. Yeah. And speaking of uh, the younger guys not getting over, I mean... <laughs> Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah, the uh, old, old, I mean, Ultimo Guerrero and now Terrible. I mean, they were. Can you imagine if the young guys won literally every match? Yeah, it wouldn't make any sense. Like it'd be real boring. Yeah. It'd suck. Yeah. Um, I like the Kingdom. Like their entrance was badass. Yeah. Matt Taven on the the uh, the throne. With and the yeah. uh, Baratheon thro- uh, crown. Oh, yeah, that's a... Game of Thrones thing. Right, yeah, I don't watch Game of Thrones. Was, uh, pretty sure it was... Uh, it was oh, kind of crooked on his head, too. Yeah, it, pretty cool. Pretty badass. Vinny was uh, Hannibal Lecter style attached to, like, a gurney-type thing and had to be removed from it. Yeah, it had the Jason mask. and. Yeah, I cool. like their gimmick. And then the guy with the broken leg was wheeled out in his wheelchair. And he had a... Uh, like a low-key type thing. Yeah. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. Um, one thing that uh, 
that I learned watching a bunch of Raven videos mm -hmm. was you really need to put the work into the character and the gimmicks and the uh, like. Your your out always have a always have a ring jacket. Like that was one of his things. Like always have a jacket. Like there's no <laughs> reason not to. Like those guys are really putting in the work to make their characters stand out. And that's why like. I saw on Facebook the Sunshine Street State Stretchers are working on their stuff. Yeah. They had a good look when we saw them at the What Show, and they've been putting the work in. Yeah. They're good workers, I'm, too. I'm glad they have their Facebook. Yes. So. Check them out on cool. Facebook, the Sunshine State Stretchers. Yep. Chris, pretty, pretty legit tag team. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I, I kind of want to start making wrestling gear. Maybe once you get everything set up out in the yeah, make a little shop, shop area. Yeah, we gotta make you a shop area for your drones too. Yeah, speaking of drones. No, not <laughs> speaking of drones. I'm just saying. Uh, what else? What was next? Our right, next match was uh, Frankie Kazarian defeating Adam Hangman Page. That asshole Kazarian for not letting. Page win. You know what? Fuck that. That asshole Kazarian for hanging Adam Page. Oh my god, he did. Oh my god, I can't believe they let him do that. I know. It looks I, so uncomfortable. It looks fucking real. Dude, that, that, that means they did their job. They yeah. like legit made me a bit uncomfortable hanging him. And I was like, oh my god. Yeah. How long is this going to last? Like How his is this eyes still were bulging out of his head. I was like, and oh, then he tapped. Is... Yeah. And then he kept hanging him. Yeah. What the fuck? And Why I, are you mad for not putting him over? Why aren't you mad for hanging the poor guy? Why are you mad for damn near killing him? Yeah. He's got a match coming up. Good lord. He's got a family. <laughs> he's got kids. He's got I don't kids. know if he's got kids. But... I have no idea. But yeah, I think he's fighting for the uh, IWGP US title. I think he is, yeah. I forgot who he's fighting against. but Not sure. Um, and that, was that... A, that was just a great match. With the nails and the strap and everything. Like, I'm, I'm looking at this right here, and it's a clip from it on Twitter from Ring of Honor. Right. And it says, he actually used it! And it's a video clip of that that strap. Can't fake that. No. Holy shit. Hashtag can't fake that. Uh, then we had Search and Destroy defeating the Rebellion, which I was a little surprised at. I really, really, really thought the Rebellion was... Because this loser must disband. Yeah. Which is a dumb stipulation. Yeah. Because what, they have to all stop talking to each other? Sorry, guys, can't be your friends anymore. Yeah. And, um, and you think Rhett Titus and Kenny King aren't going to be some faction <laughs> next week? Next week. They've been oh faction. Oh, my God, <laughs> as far as poor I know, guys. They've been, like, in a faction together in some way, shape, or form. They're faction guys. For the last... Together. For the yeah. last, like, 20 years. They're probably... They've got to be my favorite thing in Ring of Honor. Just yeah, they and they have time. been for a long time. Maybe they can bring back the YRR, Young, Rich, and Ready. Yeah. Get Chase Lance and Sal Renaro. Cody Rhodes. He's already in Bullet Club. Oh yeah, that's true. No, but it, that was the old YRR. Wait, are you talking about doing an NXT? Huh? Who's Sal Renaro? Sal Renaro. Uh, Looks like, um, I know that name. Not, not, uh, not the football player guy. Well, they're both the two football players. Riddick Moss. He yeah. looks like a smaller Riddick Moss. Okay, but I was thinking when you said that, I was thinking Titus, Brett Titus, Kenny King, Riddick Moss, and Tito. Tito Sanite 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 Sabatelli. Yeah, I mean that. They're that. That would be fucking great. But Chase and Not Cocky Rants was originally in it. Uh, but yeah. But they need Rhett Titus and Kenny King to come over to NXT and do that. Yeah. That would be great. Kenny King is so goddamn good in the ring. Yeah. They're both so good on the mics. And But this match, I believe it was Jonathan Grisham. Okay. Boy, we gotta talk. When the guy jumps on the ropes to springboard off, oh, you do not pick Christ. him back up and set him back on the ropes. Yeah. Do not do 
than yeah, that. Yeah, what the what the guy went to go do like a springboard thing off the middle rope and he missed. And he missed jump. He missed the rope. And I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Jonathan Grisham put him back on. Kinda. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he did have. I a believe hold of that's him. who it was. Right, he did have a hold of him because I said he should have just German suplexed. Yeah, him. but he. Put, and if if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. It's the other way around. I forgot who was who it was from the rebellion, but I know it wasn't Alex Shelley, Chris Saban, or Jay White. So it was okay. Jonathan Grisham. I don't think he was the one jumping off the ropes. I think he was the one taking the moves. And he John was the one jumping off the ropes. He was jumping off. It was somebody from the Rebellion that caught him. Okay, well, whoever it was from the Rebellion who caught him, do not catch them and then set them back on the rope. Yeah. And this is something that they, that old-time wrestlers have talked about. Like, there were botches back in the day that they just fucked up the, the spot and they just redid something. Yeah. They, they didn't redo. Don't, yeah, don't do that. I was I was physically angry when I saw that. Because he, like, picked him up and then, like, gingerly set him back on the ropes for him to bounce back off and do the, whatever the fucking move was. I was just watching something recently and it was, I think it was, like, Kurt Angle or somebody went to go do a suplex. Mm-hmm. And they lifted them, and their footing wasn't correct, and they were like, oh, shit. And they did that whole thing where the guy shifts his weight and reverses the German suplex. Yeah. So, he like, it should have been a German suplex that first try. Right. But it was not, because the person was like, eh, my footing's not too good, so I'm going to fake this reversal, yeah. and then I'm going to actually hit you with it. Yeah, that's how it works. Yeah, that's working. Don't... Exactly. <laughs> God, I can't remember who the hell was talking about that. And they just, they fucked up another move too, and then they won. Which yeah, well, that's what I was saying, this sucks. You see that? I feel like every time there's a botch, that's the person that wins. Right. And Charlotte. my phone just died, so I'm going to have oh, great. to pull up the uh, card on the... the my batteries, you're, you're leaning on the battery. Oh, no. Here's my battery. Oh, okay. Plug that shit in. I should have did that when I was at, like, 5%. Um... But I do know what happened next. Punishment Martinez came in and just fucking cleared house. Who was that? That giant yeah. motherfucker. Yeah, but why is he relevant? Like, I've never seen him before. He's, he's just an angry Ring of Honor guy. Okay, yeah, he looks terrifying. He is terrifying. He's like 8 foot, 16 inches, and just, he did like a sit-down choke slam on one of the dudes. Which I've never seen before. That was cool. That was very cool. I think they called it the South of Heaven Choke Slam. Oh, God. Um, which is the name of the song? I can't remember who it's by. Yeah, Slayer, definitely is. Slayer of Pantera, I don't remember. Um, but yeah, he's just a big, angry dude. He doesn't... Cool. Uh, who was he tagging with? And... Um, uh, Honor Rising. I don't know. He was tagging with somebody and just did not... like. He, I don't think he fought him after. Huh. Or I think it was... Uh, was he with Naito and them? And just didn't give a shit. Like, he flipped him off. Right. I think he was with... Was it Naito and Bushi? Um, or the other guy. The guy with the mohawk and Bushi. So, I think. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I watched so many matches since then. But yeah, like, he didn't give a shit. Like, he was like, no, fuck you, I'm just here to do the match. <laughs> and he flicks on his own guys. Like, Damn. Oh, pretty funny. All right, my phone's not turning back on, so... One second. So, what, yeah, what was after that? The, the tag team championship match? I think that's where we missed some. Well, we saw, uh... Saw that match. Oh no! It was the uh, yeah the tag team match for the tag titles, which was fucking awesome. Which was War Machine versus the Young Bucks, and then the Best Friends music hit. Yep. Uh, the Kentucky Gentleman Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta. Apparently, he is Trent Beretta now, not just Trent Question Mark. He must have got the name somehow. Uh, oh no, Jay Lethal versus Silas Young. So that's the one we missed. 
Uh, Kushida defeated Marty Skrull. I think that's where we pick back up on it. Yep. But, uh, yeah, the best friends came out, and they basically demanded a match, a rematch, I believe, and they wanted it to be a tornado tag team match. Right. Good call, guys. Because, boy, was that a fucking fun match. Uh, still says train question mark. They were calling him Beretta. I guess they can't prevent you from saying something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, this is the first time I've really seen Hanson and Roe, the War Machine. And, yeah, they're badass. They are incredible. They do some cool moves. That was a very generic comment. <laughs> <laughs> they do some cool moves, guys. Like, I hate... What a maneuver. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Hanson mm. loves to jump off of high shit and die. Right. And Ro is just fucking awesome. So this is something we talked about earlier. And they even made a comment here. Uh, it was pretty much nonstop for 13 minutes. Yeah. Jim Cornette mentioned in a show I just watched recently, there's no such thing as selling anymore. Like, there's no doing a move and the person's out for a little while. This match was literally get hit, roll out of the ring, let spot happen, roll back in. Yeah. Which, I don't know. But are you not entertained? Yeah, good point. You have a very good point. I don't want to watch, like I was just talking about, I have limited time. I have a limited time to watch wrestling during the week. Yeah. I don't have time to sit here and watch someone sell a move for 30 minutes. Like, yeah, roll out of the ring, get the fuck out the way, sell your shit on the outside, let me see the next spot. The Young Bucks will literally sell their shit on the outside. Yeah, they're, they're <laughs> selling their t-shirts, they're selling their koozies, their umbrellas now. Yeah. Oh my god. I'm so pissed. They will sell you. anything. Yeah, and I love it. And, and we're watching the uh, super kick party that happened, where just everyone just gets super kicked. And it's just done. Yeah. But, you know, it's like, I, you know, I always say wrestling is better than it ever has been. and But I do also understand that old school mentality that guys like Cornette and Kevin Nash and Bret Hart have. Yeah. And, like, back in the day, if you got punched in the face, like, yeah. sell it. But now, like, getting punched in the face is almost standard. Yeah, definitely. Like... I don't know, like, they, like, the moves have evolved, the move sets have evolved. Like, you no longer finish a match with a leg drop. Mm-hmm. Like, Hogan can do it. Yeah. Because no one can, no one's going to kick out of the Hogan leg drop. Still it, not, yeah. Because you're not supposed to. But now, if, like, if, like, the Young Bucks, like, leg dropped Hanson. Or super kick you 20 times, you're still going to kick out. Yeah. Super kick 20 times should maybe do something. Yeah. But, like, if you just, like, like a vertical suplex would be a finish before. Yes, definitely. A vertical suplex. Body slammed Andre the Giant. That was a finish. That's a little different. Yeah. That's like, 800 pounds. Yeah. How much did he say it was? Because they said. No, it was 500. No, because uh, I just heard Hogan on the Monsters in the Morning out of Orlando. Mm-hmm. They, they, he was talking. Apparently, I didn't know that Andre hated Hulk Hogan for the longest time. I believe it. I think a lot of people did. I think a lot of people still do. Oh yeah, a lot of people hate him now. And, uh, but I bet apparently it took Hogan going to Japan and coming back. Uh, he said when he came back from Japan, uh, Andre like really uh, respected him more. Okay. And they got along after that for a while, huh. I guess. But yeah, he said he was billed at five hundred. He said he said Andre had never seen a day of, in his life at five hundred pounds. He said he was always like six, seven hundred pounds. He was always much, much more than that. That also sounds like a bullshit the Hulk Hogan thing that he would say to put himself over. Well, yeah, but but he might be right. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, a guy who would take, you know, a barrel of wine to yeah. get buzzed. I mean. That's motherfucker's huge. Yeah, he is. And he was seven foot four, I believe he said. Because I pulled out a tape measure and I 
I measured it. I was like, how tall is seven foot four? Because <laughs> I was at work. Real and, fucking tall. Yeah, I was at work. I was like, oh, I grabbed the tape measure. I was like, yeah, that's seven foot four. Yeah, I'd be looking up to him. That's for sure. Question. How did we get from the Young Bucks to Andre the Giant? <laughs> Selling. Holy shit, yeah. That was quite the... That was a <laughs> fucking far turn. Almost as bad as you bringing up drones. But I got uh, him on the show. He did. I knew it happened. The next match that was so fucking good, it was definitely your typical ROH, great moves, great spots, great chains. I had some great chains. They did any chain wrestling. I don't remember. Who the hell knows? Go watch the match. That was good. Cody enough. Rhodes defeated Christopher Daniels. Now, I know you're happy about it. I am not. I want a Christopher Daniels to hold that title for much longer than he I, I just love Cody Rhodes. I'm happy for him. But I'm going to 99% agree with you. Okay, good. Now, I do I do like Cody winning one for the Bullet Club. Anytime Bullet Club gets a uh, new title, I'm happy. Yeah. And two, because he's going into the G1 in Long Beach and he's right. got the opportunity that, to win the mm, IWGP heavyweight title. You know what? Hmm. Good on you, Ring of Honor. Yeah. That's fucking smart. Because if he won... Good on you, Daniels, for Ring. giving up the belt. Yeah. The greater good. And if he wins the IWGP heavyweight title, fuck you, WWE. <laughs> yeah. Fuck you sideways. <laughs> Cody Rhodes has said he's making more money now than he ever did in WWE. It's that Bullet Club money. Bullet Club and just being damn good and, like, he got released and I guarantee every promotion was like, yep, sign me up. I want Cody Rhodes in my promotion. And I checked. He is the Global Force next-gen champion as well. What the hell is Bobby Lashley and Alberto Del Rio fighting again about then? No idea. There's too many my fucking belts in TNA. I don't even care to look it up. But uh, I think the, I think TNA has titles and Global Force has titles. Oh. Well, Someone should take away TNA's everything. <laughs> Let's talk about a good promotion. But yeah, Cody. <laughs> what's his gimmick? Oh my god. <laughs> if okay, if anyone's listening to this, you better give me shit for this. You need to. But in the comments, <laughs> give him shit. Cause I just I'll like every single one of them. I will too, because I I don't know how long he's been the American Nightmare. A little while. But it took us talking about his boots for me to realize why he's the American Nightmare. Yeah. Because we were talking about his... Because you were like, oh, I like his boots. It's like, yeah, the whole American Nightmare thing. You're like, what does this tattoo say? Oh, I was like, oh, it's his dream. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) I was like, son of a bitch. How did I not know? And I even saw a thing on, I think, Reddit. It was like the American Silver Dusty Nightmare or something. <laughs> I can't remember. It was just like... That's funny. And heals him with the mustache. Like he's having to, It was like a culmination of all the gimmicks. <laughs> it's kinda, pretty fucking good. Kind of like the Will Smith Squad thing you were telling me yes, about. Yes, exactly. Right? Will Smith Squad. <clears throat> I was going to look something up. I forgot what it was. What were we just talking about? Uh, 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 the, ch- the TNA bullshit? Yeah, TNA. Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem featuring Global Force Wrestling. Fuck that owl. He Fuck didn't do owl. it that time. Well, it's typing. Oh, okay. You can only do one thing at a time. Yeah. List of current Impact Wrestling champions. In Nashville, Tennessee. Oh, uh, yeah. So Lashley is Impact Wrestling World Heavyweight Championship. He is <laughs> championship. Uh, and- the Global Championship is Alberto. Impact Grand Championship is Moose. Wow, they have a lot of titles. X Division is Sanjay Dutt. And yeah, Next Gen is Cody. Tag Team is the Latin American Exchange LAX. Okay. Oh, Rosemary's a women's champion. And the women's... Who is that? C- Sienna? Sienna? Yes, yeah, Sienna. I don't know. She's gorgeous. I don't know who she is. I don't know. Allison K. Huh. Not sure. Yeah, uh, so yeah, they have a whole lot of belts. Sure do. I just figured out where all their budget's going. Yeah, the fucking Good Lord. belts they have to have made. Why is there... I mean, we're not going to know the answer, but... Impact 
Wrestling World Heavyweight Champion. Global Force Wrestling Global Champion. And didn't you say they were having a match? So maybe they're unifying that. Oh, maybe. Yeah, Alberto said that they were going to have a better match than Samoa Joe and uh, Brock Lesnar. Which is not going to fucking happen. Fuck Alberto. I've never liked him. He's a fucking prick. I used to like him. He and, has lost all respect. And then Grand Champion. Uh, okay, X Division Champion is something that could be completely different. Sure. Uh, ne- like Next Gen Champion? What the fuck is Next Gen Champion? I, I don't know. He defeated Sanjay Dutt for it, though. Do you have to be like a second or third generation or fourth generation wrestler to win it? <laughs> it's like a real small yeah. secure people that can win it. Which, I mean, hey, if you're going to do it, I mean, why not? Don't do that. That's a terrible idea. <laughs> Jesus, I don't know. And then, uh... I guess there's only one tag... Oh, no, there's two tag team championships. Yeah. And LAX has both. Yeah. That's... Whatever. <laughs> this is them just trying to make themselves look important. Look at all of our champions. Let me see. The, let me see if the next gen championship has a. Is that it? Has a what? Like a description. Of oh no! What it is. Well, it's only been PJ Black, Sanjay Dutt, and Cody Rhodes. All right. Well, I'm not sure who PJ Black is. Oh, that's uh. Yeah, you do. Yeah, oh, Justin Gabriel. Oh, did you hear about him? Oh yes. You like. Lost a leg. I didn't read fingers. about it. No, it didn't. he lost a finger and he broke his leg. It was something terrible. I think it was worse than that too. I know it was. It was bad. I didn't want to read it. Like that breaks my heart. Like, I we uh, did we see him in NXT? No, he he would have been long gone by the time we started going to NXT. Okay, we must have watched him on NXT then. I think no, he, he was me. he wasn't an NXT guy. Huh? He wasn't an NXT guy. You sure? He was an FCW guy. Uh, uh, FCW Heavyweight Championship. Yeah. He was a tag team champion with a core. Yeah, first season of NXT. Right. Uh, that's old NXT. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not talking about now. Okay. Like, yeah. I'm talking about yeah. shit NXT. <laughs> shit XT. I, I don't even know if it was ever that bad. Okay, it wasn't as great. No, as it was that. bad. Like they had them doing like cake eating championships and stuff. Oh. And like you know, put your head on the bat and spin and run and. Yeah, it was really uh, bad. Then where the hell did I see him? Uh, you may have just. I mean, Justin Gabriel was very prominent for quite a while. He's an excellent wrestler. He was PJ Black and Lucha Underground. It might be where you know him from. No, I know him as Justin Gabriel. Like I. Because I remember, like, he had some, like, really cool tights. I may have shown and, him to you, because I'm a big Justin Gabriel fan. You did, but I don't remember what you showed me him in. I thought it was NXT, but maybe it wasn't. And I thought it was cool he was from South Africa. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Seems like a good dude, too. Oh, yeah, from what little bit I saw. Oh, that's interesting. Well, it is the first and only wrestler to have ever won championships in WWE, TNA, GFW, which underground... TNA and GFW are the same fucking promotion. Fuck off, Wikipedia. <laughs> well, not technically. I think even technically. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Moral of the story today, kids, as we wrap this up. Don't lose fingers and break legs. No. Oh. Don't watch Total Nonstop Action Impact Wrestling presented by Anthem featuring Global Force Wrestling. Fuck, Fuck that, that owl. Let's see how many times I can fit that into the show. Fuck just, that owl. <laughs> I'm just glad we got it in. We get it in every show. Yeah, you got your drones in. Yeah. Got, got, uh, got, fuck that owl. It's been a good show. Yeah. You got your shit in. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to fly my tiny whoop. Oh my god. I can't wait to go play some more Destiny. So we're gonna wrap drone. this up. What's that? Get a drone, race me. Get a drone. I'll get a drone eventually. Chinese loop, it's cheap. That's gonna have to give that edit out. <laughs> Just kick the microphone. <laughs> okay. Fuck that mic. I need to go to bed. So me too. We're gonna wrap this up. You can find us, as you know, on 
FutureVillains.com. That's F-E-W-T-R-U-E-V-I-L-L-A-I-N-S.com. You can find us on Facebook, Future Villains Entertainment. Same thing on YouTube. You can find us on SoundCloud. You can find us on Stitcher. You can find us on iTunes. Leave us a comment. Subscribe. Leave a review. Please leave us comments and anything you guys like. We're going to be doing giveaways on the Facebook. Uh, we're regularly posting stuff to interact with you guys. We love the interaction. Yeah, you can... I haven't gotten to Dustin yet. I can't find him. Oh, okay. So, Dustin, Help us find Dustin, listening. guys. <laughs> we need we, to find him. We have your stickers. We're ready to send them to you. We need your information. Oh, yeah. I want stickers. I, I, I haven't even got stickers yeah, you yet. Don't even have, <laughs> you don't even have your own stickers. I don't. I need to get those. Mm. So, yeah. And oh, you can also follow us on Twitter. I'm at Best in the Realm. At Brightman25. And Brooks is Jeremy Brooks 42 I can't believe you missed episode 20. Yeah. Our 20th anniversary. What is this? When is the 20th anniversary? Huh? 20th anniversary is, like, supposed to be a thing. I don't fucking know. No, I know what you mean. Like, copper, right? Or steel. Yeah. Or wood. What's our anniversary? 20th, yeah, anniversary. PS4. No, not a PS4. Fifth anniversary gift. Platinum? What? Yeah, what do you do for your 20th anniversary? Uh, what are you what doing? Are You're bad at this. Platinum. All right. This was our platinum episode. <laughs> oh, it doesn't mean shit. Let's stop. <laughs>